Hello, I've got a bunch of uh, old wine corks laying around and thought I'd make some fishing boppers out of them and I'm gonna show you how I do it. The boppers are made from wine corks and wooden dowels. I found a 3 16 inch hardwood dowel works well. I cut the dowel into eight inch sections. I don't even really measure that well. I end up cutting it down later anyway. I drill a single 3 16 inch hole in each cork. I use my mini lathe that I built from a cheap drill for this step and several others. There's a link in the description for my video on how I built it if you're interested. I try to drill the holes as close to the center of the cork as possible and I try to keep them straight, but I don't really spend much time fussing over it to be honest. Then I glue the dowel pieces into the corks and let the glue dry completely. I use my homemade drill lathe to shape the corks. I do the primary shaping with a strip of 60 grit sandpaper. Sometimes I have a shape in mind beforehand, but usually I let the natural shape of the cork dictate how I shape the bobber. A lot of the bobbers I've made have traditional shapes, but sometimes I go crazy and come up with some funky shapes. A lot of times I do quite a bit of shaping, but if I find a cork with cool printing, I may do minimum shaping to preserve the text and graphics. Once the primary shaping is done, I work down to 220 grit sandpaper to get a nice smooth surface. At this point, I cut the dowel to its final size with a utility knife, and I usually just eyeball the length, whatever looks right for that particular bobber. Then I sand the dowel with a sanding disc attached to my homemade lathe. The bottom gets sanded flat, and the top gets rounded over a bit. Next I take a standard safety pin and cut it so I'm left with the coiled part on the bottom plus about a quarter inch on each leg. I use two pairs of pliers to bend these legs so that they're parallel. Then I make shallow indentions on opposite sides of the dowel on the bottom of the bobber with diagonal cutting pliers, being careful to only use a little bit of force. It's easy to cut all the way through. The safety pin coil legs slide into these indentions and they help hold the coil in place. To keep the coil in place permanently, I wrap it with plain polyester sewing thread. A fly tying bobber is very helpful here. There are links in the description to supplies. If you do any fly tying or rod building, you are probably familiar with this technique. If you've never done anything like that, it might take a couple of tries to get the hang of it, but it isn't too hard. I wrap all the way up the safety pin legs and then a little further up the dowel. To finish it off, I slip a piece of looped thread under one winding, wrap another seven times or so, then cut the wrapping thread while maintaining tension so it doesn't unwind from the dowel. Then I slip the cut thread through the loop and pull both threads until the loop is tight against the windings. Then I give it a quick tug to pull both threads back through the windings. I hope the video makes it clear how it's done. You may need to practice a little to get the hang of it. Painting the bobbers is pretty straightforward. I first dip the bottom of the bobbers in gesso that's been thinned one to one with water and slowly pull them out of the gesso. I let that dry for about 20 minutes, then dip the bottom in regular acrylic craft paint and slowly lift the bobber out. I like to touch the coil to a paper towel to remove excess paint before letting the paint dry overnight. I paint the top in the same way. First priming with thin gesso, then painting with acrylic paint. I use standard wooden clothes pins with the tips cut flat to hold the bobbers while dipping, and they seem to work well. Once the paint is completely dry, I add a protective coating by dipping. I've used polyurethane and spar urethane, and both work, but I think I prefer the spar urethane. I usually do three or four coats of spar urethane following the directions on the can. It's important to tend to any drips so you don't get a drip of finish drying on the end of your bobber. Functionally it's not really a big deal, but I think the bobbers look better without noticeable drips. Once the finish has completely dried, the bobbers are ready to go.
So I think the bobbers turned out well. They certainly look cool and they work well. They're dirt cheap, although they're a little time consuming to make, but you can make a bunch at the same time and then it's not so bad. And of course, there's a certain satisfaction from uh, catching fish on gear you made yourself. I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe to keep up to date with my newest videos. You can follow me on Twitter at Makeify1. Thanks for watching.